Imagine this. You're a peasant girl. Your family has been in poverty and your stomach hurts because you haven't eaten for several days. You're cold, you're sick, and you're just hoping and praying for some kind of relief and reprieve from this hell that you're in. And then one day a beautiful noble woman comes up to you, takes your hand, and says, I would like for you to come to my castle for work. You get so excited because the potential of helping your family or getting food in your belly or just being off the street gives you some level of hope. But what you don't know is that you're trading one hell for another hell. Next thing you know, you're being locked up in a cellar and beaten to the edge of your life. You're wishing that you could just go back to the street, go back to being a peasant and get out of this hell, but you can't. Before you take your last breath, you look up and you see the person beating you is that noble woman who for a few seconds gave you hope that you were gonna get out and be free. This is the story of Elizabeth Bathory, the Countess of Blood. She is one of the most prolific and scariest serial killers to ever exist in history. I have been listening to a lot of murder mysteries and a lot of crazy things lately, and so I dove into this rabbit hole of different um, prolific killers, and I stumbled onto Elizabeth Bathory. She has quite the killer count, even though nobody really knows how many people she's actually killed, but it's probably pretty high. Um, and then I started kind of really getting into female serial killers because some of the scariest serial killers to exist are female serial killers because, quite frankly, women like to cause a lot of destruction and a lot of pain. And this woman is not a stranger to that. So let's get into the story about the Countess of Blood. A little disclaimer, this does talk about um, well, obviously, it talks about taking someone's life, it talks about beating people, um, and it is kind of dark and bloody. So if that's something that you don't want to watch, it's perfectly fine. Also, there is a lot of words in this story that I don't know how to say because a lot of this is in Hungary and Vienna. And so a lot of this I don't know how to say. I tried to Google some of the pronunciation and even though they broke down how to properly say it, I couldn't say it. So I'm gonna do my best just so you are aware. But Elizabeth Bathory was born around 1561 in, um, and this is one of those moments, Nybator, Nye Hungary and she grew up in Transylvania. Elizabeth actually comes from a pretty decently wealthy and powerful family already. Before she even gathered or got the title of Countess, she already had a pretty well-established family name. Her cousin Stefan Bathory was actually the King of Poland and the Duke of Transylvania, so she already had quite a name for herself. It's said that Elizabeth had some mental health issues and that she actually had quite the temper and was quite aggressive and that she would take it out on family members and the people around her. And when she was 14, she had relations with a peasant and she ended up getting pregnant, which her family was not very happy about because when you're a noble, especially a noble woman, a lot of what your purpose is is very transactional. Your family wants to marry you off to a very rich, very powerful man so you can gain a title so that your family can gain also the title and the money that comes with that marriage. But when you have relations outside of wedlock, that can actually damage you and prevent you from being able to do that. So her family was obvious, very, obviously very distraught about the fact that she had relations and got pregnant at the age of 14. But luckily for Elizabeth, at the age of 15, she met a man named, and I'm going to say this wrong, Count Nadasi. He was a famous soldier because he fought against the Turks, and marrying him made it so she could gain that title of Countess. 
while Elizabeth was actually quite young, she got into witchcraft and had quite an interest in it. She was exposed to it by her aunt, who was said to be a witch, and also by her uncle, who was said to be into alchemy and to be a devil worshipper. She was said to have a nurse who was burned at the stake because she sacrificed babies for the devil. I don't know how true that part of the story is, but it was a part of it, and it kind of plays into some of the things that happens further on to the story, but she was in to witchcraft, which back in the day, back in the 1500s, um, being into witchcraft was a big no-no. You didn't want to be into witchcraft. Granted, women were accused of witchcraft for having their own minds and reading um, and telling their husbands no, but if you were accused of witchcraft, that was it for you. And so for someone to practice witchcraft openly was actually quite bold. As Elizabeth got older, she grew into more power. She became more important. She became wealthier. She had quite the name of herself, mostly due to the fact that her husband was the commander of the army, the Hungary army that was protecting Hungary from the powerful army of the Turks. Um, and so he had quite the name, which in turn gave her quite the name. She actually was in control of the castle that was a main invasion point, invasion route, and was in the capital of the Austrian Empire. So she had enough power and control to be able to control a very important castle. The reason I'm telling you about this part to kind of really establish how much power she has is because it helps you understand why she was able to get away with some of the atrocities that she got away with. Um, she became extremely obsessed with youth and beauty and her appearance. She would actually stare at herself in the mirror for a very long time and analyze her face and look at her face. She would also change her clothes several times a day, which also speaks to how much power and wealth that she has. Because most of the time, back in that time period, people usually only had one set of clothes. But this woman had enough power and wealth to have enough outfits to go throughout the day several times a day whenever she wanted to and that says a lot and she was willing to do anything to maintain her youth anything to stay young and beautiful and fresh and so somehow she got it into her mind that the best way to do that was to bathe in people's blood because what else could you do to keep yourself youthful and young, you know, because that's just the best way to do it. So she started luring peasant women, peasant girls to her castle with the promise of work to take them in and have them work for her. And like I said in the beginning of the video, imagine being on the streets and poor and almost dying and then this woman offers you work. You would have so much hope in your heart, but then that hope would be crushed because after she lured these girls to her castle, she would kill them and drain them of their blood and bathe in it because she thought it would help her youth. And a lot of people believe because she was into witchcraft that she was also sacrificing these girls to the devil to also maintain her youth. But she wouldn't just kill these girls because that would be just. She would lock them in a cellar and beat them until they swelled up. She would have her servants beat them until they swelled up. And sometimes she would do it herself to the point where she would have to change clothes because she became so bloody. And it said that even her husband, Count Nadasi, would also participate in these beatings when he was back from the war. Now, no one actually knows how many people she killed. No one has any idea. But a lot of historians speculate that it's about as high, if not higher, as 650 people. 650 people. Let that sink in. That is a lot of people to kill. But they speculate that it could be more because she was killing people from 1585 to 1610. That is 25 years. She was unchecked, unstopped for 25 years. Now my question was, how could she be getting away with it, right? How could she be possibly getting away with it? But the answer is actually quite simple. She was getting help from servants and her husband, but also she's a noble woman. She's very powerful. She's very important. She's the wife of the man that is commanding the ar army, keeping their country safe. And she's got a lot of wealth. So, and the servants are probably scared as hell of her because 
at any point she could have said, "Oh, I want I want to kill you. I want your blood." So that's how she got away from it unchecked. But of course, things have to come to an end, luckily for the people of Hungary, because in 1610, the king of Austria decided enough is enough. So King Matthias II, the king of Hungary, was actually forced to intervene with these killings because her killings were so blatant, so in your face, it was just very bold, and he was like, I need to do something about this. So he had his the governor of Hungary investigate the allegations that a Lutheran minister had against Elizabeth. But the governor had to be very careful about these allegations and about this investigation because, like I said, Elizabeth has a lot of power and wealth. So if these allegations are incorrect, or if he does something even kind of wrong, he could be absolutely destroyed, if not killed, because of that. So he had to work very slow and be very very careful. Now, of course, the investigations were very lucrative, and of course, her killing these people was proven because, obviously, she was very blatant about it. So you would think that these murders, these atrocities, these awful things that she did would be grounds for execution, because that makes sense. If it was anybody else, if it was a peasant, if it was just a random person, not a noble, they would be executed for such an act. But the government was afraid to execute Elizabeth because King Matthias had borrowed a large sum of money from her, and he knew that if he killed her, if he executed her, he would have to pay back every single penny and wouldn't be in debt to her, and he didn't want that. So he decided to imprison her for life. Now, there wasn't a trial for Elizabeth for a couple of reasons. One, because her murders were obvious, but also because he wanted to save nobility embarrassment. Because back then, your name is extremely important. It's not just your name, it's your family's name too. And anything that you do in the name of your family affects them. It affects them, almost as if they were doing it too. So the king didn't want to cause the family and the nobility to have that problem. So he decided not to put her on trial. But four of her servants were tried and they were burned at the stake for helping her with these atrocities, which to me is kind of sad because chances are these servants weren't helping her because they wanted to. They were helping her because they were scared, not just of being let go and being put on the streets, but also of being killed. But they did what they did. So they were burned at the stake. But Elizabeth was locked up in her castle for four years. And in, on August 21st of 16... 14, she was found dead in her tower. You can actually go visit this tower, which is really cool. The ruins are really pretty, and you can actually go and visit it, and you can see the place that she ruled, but also the place that she died, if you were interested, but she died there. The locals didn't want to bury her anywhere near their country. They didn't want to bury her anywhere near it, which is obvious. It makes sense to me. So they decided to send her back to her home country where she was born and to put her in her family crypt and to just wash their hands of it, which to me wash your hands because damn over 650 people of course speculation but she killed people for 25 years women maybe let me be specific she killed women for 25 years because she believed if she bathed in their blood she would be useful forever and beautiful forever now in a weird messed up way she has. She has stayed young and her legacy has survived simply because it's been almost 500 years since she was born and since she died. And her story has inspired lots of other stories. It inspired a character, Hellboy, fighting a character that is like the Countess. It inspired Batman having to fight a character that's like the Countess. It's inspired a Swedish band named Bathory to make music. It's also said that Elizabeth Bathory inspired Bram Stoker to write Dracula. And some people even say that Elizabeth Bathory is Dracula's wife, which isn't confirmed, but you know, she didn't drink blood, she bathed in it, but still, it's pretty messed up. But she has continued to inspire a lot of content created by people because of her story, because she's one of the greatest, most prolific and vicious murderers to ever exist in history. If she killed over 650 people, she is the greatest serial killer in history. And I don't mean great, like, wow, she's so great. I mean, like, she has killed the greatest amount of people. Granted, I mean, there are some things that could be considered as murdering lots of people, but you know, whatever. But she, she killed 
possibly six, over 650 people. And that is crazy to me. Just in the name of youth, like, I would like to stay young. I would like my skin to stay nice. But, like, who doesn't want to stay young and beautiful? But I'm not going to kill someone and bathe in their blood to do that. You know, I'm just not. I'm just not going to do that. It's just, just, that's just not on my bucket list to do things. But yeah, she has continued to inspire people to make content. So in a weird way, in a really twisted, messed up way, she has retained that beauty and youth. So, yeah. But that is the story of the Countess of Blood, the Blood Countess. I found this extremely interesting. And th there's, of course, not a lot of stories or a lot of, of information that comes with this because this was in the 1500s to the 1610s. Like, that was way before my time. So, like, there's not a lot of stuff about it. But I do think it's really cool that you can go and visit the castle that she lived in and that she died in. And you could probably hear a lot of stories about it. Um, but there are some wild, like, like diving into the the rabbit hole of murder mysteries it can be kind of dark pretty dark and uh, really interesting though mostly because the human psyche and the psychology of it all is extremely like interesting because like like i said i'd like to stay young and beautiful but i'm not going to kill someone to do that but there are people who believe that makes sense people who believe that killing someone and bathing in their blood will keep them young and that's crazy like just the, the the mind to me is really terrifying and humans are really scary they can be really really cool but they can also be really terrifying and this woman I would have I don't know I don't know if I would like to meet her because if you meet her it's probably not a good circumstance but like I'd like to ask like what was going through your mind what made you think that this was like, what her, her thought process? Like, how she got from point A to point B? Because a lot of people believe it was witchcraft and sacrifice. But, like, like, La Lurie, if I'm saying this right, please someone correct me. But in New Orleans, La Lurie would put blood on her face because she believed that it would keep her young. I believe that's real. I don't think that's just an American horror story thing. I believe that's a real thing. But, like, this isn't something that hasn't been heard of. People will sacrifice babies or virgins for youth. You know, people will sell their souls for youth. Like, it's wild to me. And it'd be interesting to be able to talk to this person and kind of figure out the psychology of that. And kind of figure out why that made sense. Because it doesn't make sense to me. But yeah. So, if you have any thoughts, what are your thoughts about it? What are your thoughts? Like, and, you know, about Elizabeth, the blood countess. Like, how do you feel about it? What are your thoughts about it? I genuinely believe that a lot of female killers are really scary. I do think that some of the scariest, most twisted, and messed up things have happened because of women. And I'm not saying that to be sexist. No, no, no. No. Because I... I'm a female-bodied person. I'm just saying that the difference between how men kill people or kill and how women do is so vast. And some of the scariest cases are women. And a lot of people believe that a woman, like, it's so hard to explain. I feel like I'm diving into a bad hole. But, like, watching a story about a girl poisoning her best friend's coffee because she's jealous of her. Like best friends killing each other because they like the same person um like women doing things like that for youth like it's it's so different and I think some of the most twisted ones were from female serial killers and it's very interesting and if someone else agrees with me please say you do because I feel like I'm digging myself a hole but yeah, so if you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you can be notified whenever I post. And I hope that you have a wonderful day and a beautiful night. And this is Kat signing off. Bye. Um.